Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Kansas City Scouts franchise mode on NHL 18. This is the 30 second expansion mode. We are in the playoffs today. We're playing the Minnesota Wild in the first round. And I'm going to be doing the full playoffs in this episode. That's how I like to watch it. That's how I'm going to do it. These are the lines we're going with. Patrick Line, Couture and Sprong, Sherry, Hurtle and Yakupov. Hurtle being a deadline day acquisition that I didn't make in my deadline day episode. I made it in the next one because I just realised that he was available. And then on defence we've got Orlov and McAvoy, Nurse and Uwalevi, Alexiak and Reinhardt. And let's take a quick look at the Minnesota Wild lines that we're going to be facing. Uh, Richie got pretty good. Medium elite. I think he starts low elite, doesn't he? He looks pretty juicy. Complete side note, he's not in the Minnesota Wild. Let's go to the Minnesota Wild. Nestra still on their first line, who is a third line checking forward and a right winger. I don't understand these lines. What are they thinking? Bill Dowd got 55 points. What did Berger get? Did he get better than that? 46. I don't understand why he's on that line. You'd think he'd benefit greatly in points from being on the line with Granlund. How did Granlund do? 58 points. Seems like a really logical step. Zucker as well on the third, second, I don't really understand. 51 points. What about Coyle? Because Coyle's not a big point producer. 30 points. I feel like Dowd and Zucker would be even better, and so would Granlund, if you switch Nestrasil and Berker with Bill, uh, Dowd and Zucker. But what do I know? Eriksson got 46 points from the third line. That's pretty nice. They're nothing particularly unbelievable anywhere. But neither are we. We're pretty weak, in our, especially in our depth as well. Defensively, Sutter is still rocking on 89. Pretty good. But he's 36 with five years left on his contract, so it's not going to be great in a while. Dumba and on the line with Suter, Savard and Darlin, and then Scandella and Spurgeon. They're definitely better than us defensively. And Devon Dubnik in goal is an 88. They're better than us in goal as well. They are a better team than us, but not crazy ahead of us. I mean, the best player in the series should be Patrick Line, in terms of just overall. So we have him. Let's just go into the first game. We won the last three games in the regular season. We slow simmed them because we were losing games, but Rasmus Darlin and Bill Dowd scored two in the first period. On Jonas Corpusalo. Dimitri Yaskin gets one back in the second period. Let's go slow. They're out shooting us badly. And they score on the power play. Charlie Coyle gets one past Corpusalo again. And that looks like it. Unless we get one pretty soon. That's going to be enough. We're on the power play though. But they kill that. And again the power play. And they score shorthanded. Nestor still after I've slagged him off. And on the power play again they score... And again they score, and it's not empty netters. That's 6-1. That really got away from us. And a really poor, poor start from Corpus Silo. I, I think we have to just write that one off did not go our way in any possible way. I don't know what word I'm trying to say. Not one that exists. But we are one nothing down in this series. I'm, I was hopeful this team could compete at this point and then get better in the off-season again. Coyle scores again after again saying he only got 30 points. He's got at least two goals. 11 shots apiece. 3 nothing. Coil again. This game's over. Wow. Patrick Liner gets the goal back. We're doid, uh, dowed again. We're getting destroyed. 
we really are getting a bit done over here. Let's take a look at those lines then, because it's already at a point where we need to make changes. We've lost both of the first two games, but we've lost them badly. That first line is, a, is an even, uh, even strength line. Let's leave that as it is for now. Our fourth line is where it's going wrong. Third line, sorry. Let's get physical. Let's get um, Yaskin up on the second. No. Poirier on the uh, Brown. There you go. Brown on the second. Yakupov's going to go down. He's not got a point. And just try and break that third line up a little bit. In fact, Tierney's going to go on the third as well. Because that third line's booed it. Really hasn't done well at all there. It's been a pretty good line in the regular season. And that first line defence is not getting it done. Let's switch Ulevi back to McAvoy's line. And let's put... Let's give uh, Reinhardt... Reinhardt some time with all of but at the end of the day if your goalie plays a 0.853 save percentage it doesn't matter the lines are insignificant unless that's just that he's facing a 100 great shots a game very very poor start anyway let's try game 3 but I'm not hopeful as it stands. A shutout period for us. 12 shots to 13. Ryan Suter. And we got shut down in that second period as well. They're really surging ahead. They look just significantly stronger than us. We're on the power play and they kill it. We look weak. We look really weak. And oh, how on earth... Goalie's killing us. Their goalie is killing us. Oh, Dubnik. Devin Dubnik is destroying us right now. He really is. And it's... It's tough to say that we deserve to have won a game, but Dubnik is wrecking us. He really is destroying us here. Look, 0.976. Come on. What can you do? When the, you know, I mean, Corpus Allo played well in that game, but I just have to keep him going because it's Nubnik is just keeping us out. We need Corpus Allo to step up big time, like he did in that last game. And we need Line A, and we need Couture and Sprong put Dubnik under pressure and we score on the first five shots and we're still on the power play but that's a good goal it's a good goal to get one that early but Charlie Coyle scores on the fourth shot for them so even though we're out shooting them <sighs> it doesn't matter look at this garbage we scored on the fifth shot and we are still losing second period just Corpusalo this is on him, mate. And look. Look at what Dubinik's doing again. It's over. It's all over. And I'm going to look at those stats. And you know what? I'm, I wasn't expecting to go necessarily to win this Stanley Cup. But what the hell is that from Corpusalo? From all of our guys. But Corpusalo, I think, is the main the main culprit there. Look at that hot garbage. 0.878. Goals against average 4.51. You can blame the defense. But at the end of the day, 0.974 for Dubnik. 
Their defence might have been garbage, but look at their points totals here. That's going to be obscene. Dowd, who is on their second line, got 10 points. Coyle got 10 points. Suter is a defensive defenceman. He got 6 points. That's really disappointing. If not all that surprising. Zach Parise is still playing apparently. That was awful. That really was bad. Uh, what can I say about that? That's what happens. Corpusolo is only 87 overall. I'm really annoyed about that. I might trade him. He's annoyed me enough. I don't need to deal with his garbage. He was pretty decent in the regular season, I think. How good was he? That was depressing. He was... 0.917's not terrible. It's not great. So, yeah, it's okay. Do we need to look at moving him? What's his contract? We have to re-sign Line 8. I think his contract's up. It's up. And he's a UFA. That puts us in a weird position. Because he's just not, not justified that price tag in the slightest in that last game. That last series. That might be a sign and trade. We need something there. I don't know what we needed. Okay, well... I'm going to wait on the re-signings until the re-sign phase because I think they might get a bit cheaper. But I'm going to just sim to the draft and then leave it when we have the final rankings. We know who we've got to trade with and we can see what's up. I'm going to scout calling. Let's go to the SHL defenseman for four weeks and then after that I'll just let the guys I'll let the scouts do what they want I th everyone goods in the WHL it seems in fact I might send them back to the WHL just to get a better idea of the uh, forwards again T will see we're after he is the uh, franchise centre yeah let's do that Let's do four weeks there. Just make sure we get the best idea of all of those forwards if we can. The Florida Panthers were the uh, highest number of wins in the regular season, 49. I think they finished fourth overall, but they do take the Stanley Cup. And I'm just a bit, I'm a bit shocked by that, really. I wasn't expecting to get swept. Vancouver and Boston got lucky on that one with a traded draft pick. And we're going to have to try and trade with Vegas. Now, what are they like? We can take a look at that in a second. And I mean, this has been a shorter video, so let's take a little look at retired players. Rick Nash is gone, so that's a lot of money gone from our. That's three million gone immediately. Loophole again. Six million. We weren't going to resign him anyway, but uh, zero point seven five for Upshaw and Yannick Weber went early actually, but he was rubbish. So goalies won't be anyone, I don't think. And as far as Lamov decides to jump out, he didn't. Let's go to all. Hank, will you be there? He won't. Hank's holding on. I think he was. Pretty low overall at this point, but he's holding on. Why would he not? Look at that money he's getting offered. And Spetsa, obviously Nash, Koivu, 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 K, 
Kessler, Krejci, Blakanich, Bufflin, Vermet, Verneuf, Zajac, Callahan, Captain Kelly, Cromwell went, Joel Ward, anybody else interesting, Tutin went, Bolland finally went, 66 overall, and what was his contract? Oh, for some reason they re-signed him, I guess. Boychuk, Markov, that's a big one as well. Okay, let's have a look at the... Awards, standings, sorry, that was taking a sip of coffee. Stanley Cup champion, Florida Panthers. New York Islanders were the President's Trophy winners. And it looks like the Panthers beat the Predators. Tavares with the Art Ross. The heart went to Carlson. That's huge. Defensemen don't often win the heart, so that's interesting. Um, Gary Price winning it was shocking. So, well, it wasn't shocking. It was surprising to me because usually it's just whoever gets the most points, it seems to be. Carlson with the Norris, obviously, and Lenny Bing. That's great for him. The Calder went to Joe Valeno, who we traded away for Patrick Laine. Uh he, he was only 81 overall. I'll check that again in a minute. Consumite went to Bob Bobrovsky of the Panthers. The Vesna went to Price for the second year running. He's actually performing. Doesn't always happen. And the Jennings as well. Uh, P. Myers. Don't know who that is. We've got the Masterton. Jonathan Taves with a Selkie. Nicked it from Bergeron for the first time in this save. Interesting. Ted Lindsay was Eric Carlson as well. And John Tavares with the Maurice Richard. Let's just really quickly check how many points Tavares and uh, Carlson got. Tavares got 94, 48 goals. It's good, but 29 goals and 57 assists for 86 points for Carlson. Brady Shea was a point per game guy. He was someone we looked at moving, and his, I mean, it, that isn't his actual um, overall. Be sure of that. It was 88, and I very much doubt he jumped up that much, but he's 91 next season. He's going to be 91 next season because he got over a point per game. I'd love to think that could be a real thing. 48 goals for Alex Ovechkin. He was actually tied for the uh, Maurice Richard. Clayson Keller got 46 goals. What on earth? Patrick Kane got 44. Colin White of the Ottawa Senators, 39. Okay, let's really quickly check our growth and then let us see uh, really quickly let's see how the Vegas Golden Knights did this year it could be that that was a lottery pick but I, I don't know let's have a look the Vegas Golden Knights did not do great they finished third bottom of the league and they got the first overall pick. Okay. That's what we're going to try and move up for anyway. Because we know that Teal is a beast. We know this. Fact. So we might be able to use our first round pick... And interesting. I thought he was an elite guy when it came up earlier. I'm pretty sure he'll be elite anyway. Um, yeah, he's pretty good stats, isn't he? So there's Cosinoir and Sloan. Sloan's got very good stats as well, actually. But Teal's going to be NHL ready. I'd be pretty confident about that. He'd be maybe low 80s, 82-ish, something like that. He's who I want to be getting. Can I make that happen? Whole different question. Uh, Justin Pushaw is an elite guy, apparently. Any other guys that it reckons are elite? 
there is Edla, Elite Grinder. That'll be hilarious. To get an Elite Grinder would be great. And Theo Persinger, I mean, we'll pick up Persinger for sure. We don't, I have no idea what it'll be. We've scouted him 17 times, and it reckons he's elite. That could easily be a top nine, a low top nine. But it's worth the risk at that point in the seventh round. We'll pick him up. But obviously, as I said, we're going after Benjamin Thiel. We will be able to make that happen with the trade assets we have. The trade assets I'm looking at using are Hoffman, who's already on the trade block, and a couple of firsts. I might be able to make that happen. Join me next time to find out if I can. No, no, I said I was going to do this. I will not forget. Because I did, and then I didn't. Uh, line A apparently had a good enough year that he's jumped up statistically. Even after not a very good playoffs. Rubsov's up to an 80. But then he's back down to a 79 with statistical growth. He had a bad year by, by those that estimation. Or did he get 31 points? It's not great, is it? He probably would have been better off in the AHL. Uh, Ulevi had gone up to an 86. So he's gone back down. I'm confused. Very confused there. Okay. Sprong has grown in poise, but nothing else. Let's have a look at our prospect, guys. Very, very good growth from Dean Garcia. Lower league up to 73. And the shoe skin, 74. Anybody else that is particularly important or impressive? Salcedo, 76. And Lilligren, 77. Hoping for a good jump out of Salcedo, but I'm guessing it'll be 78 at the start of the new year. It's very disappointing growth from Mikhanov. He might be off. He might just be another piece to throw into that deal. Hoffman, very, very disappointing growth. He's going to be a piece we look to use in that trade. And it looks like... Whoa! Did you say he grew for some reason? It looks like very disappointing growth from Bus as well. Very disappointing. And Nathan Stoll. He went up massively in the first year, but still. We're up to a contender, though. Okay. I'm going to end that there. Join me for the next episode when I'll be doing the draft, and hopefully we won't be tanking anymore after we get Benjamin Teal. And I'm hoping we will be able to. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Thank you.